uh, will be live for use. Um, Ken, we um, kick off with you. Yeah, uh, congrats on the captaincy. Just, just your thoughts Thanks. first on, on getting the nod. Um, yeah, obviously honoured. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to do it before in uh, the Barbers game with Wayne. Um, so yeah, like you said, it's it's one of those things, I guess, when you're lucky enough to uh, have your first cap for Wales, um, and obviously to to lead such a great bunch of boys out, um, is obviously never, I don't know, tip the hat, I guess. Is it more special, and uh, do you appreciate it more, given what you've been through in the last year from that injury <coughs> um, against Japan? Uh, 100%, yeah, of course it does. Um, not just even being captain, I just think uh, probably take for granted um, as rugby players, probably what we get to do every day. And uh, when you're a kid, you, you look up to one end of your rugby player, and then when you get there, you probably take your, your eye off it a bit and realise uh, what you're doing. And, Unfortunately, when you have these uh, breaks that are part of the game with injuries, you look back and yeah, to, you've got to appreciate more, um, especially probably when you haven't got too many of those days left. But Wayne's just put the pressure on because he said Justin's probably nailed on for uh, his space, that's why he's turned to you. But looking at the, the depth in the back row, being on the sidelines, I know you obviously want your place back, but that, that, does, does that um, give encouragement? You know, the likes of Tommy Raffles come in, Jack's come on. Um, how, how do you view the competition there, which you've always had through your career? Yeah, like, like it goes back to from the start, basically, uh, like in 12 years ago when it yeah. first all happened. It was this crazy back row then, and it's always been such a position where there's so much strength with whoever plays there, um, which does an amazing job. So we're, we're there, we're, we try to help each other as much as we can from, from the start of when it happened to now, um, making sure whoever's in that, back row wherever it's the three or with whoever's on the bench come on and work well together in whatever position we're going in. Uh, just a final one for me, Wayne just spoke about um, uh, uh, flexibility and be, being able to play numerous positions. Given that, what, 34 will go to the World Cup, has it become more, has it become a, a pressure on players now given that you, you probably have to sort of uh, play in a few positions uh, to get into a World Cup squad? I think it's probably more the way rugby's played now, as in you can't just have one good skill anymore. It's more like you get found out if you have a weakness. Um, and rugby these days, you've got to be able to do everything, whether it's line out, to pass, to tackle, um, to everything. And I think as a back rower, you're involved in all them. So you've got to try and be able to, to get as many strengths as possible, really, to, to fit in any team, no even their squad. Cheers, Justin. Um, describe yourself as a captain. Um, oh, I've always been lucky enough to be captain of the Ospreys for a number of years now as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, I, I won't say I'm not much of a talker, probably as you guys know um, anyway, but um, no, I try to just, you know, lead by example, I guess, or just say the right things at the right time. Um, but like you say, after that break, I just want to make sure we enjoy it as well and um, yeah, you know, Got to make sure that we're performing and winning as well. And There's a lot of coaching outside of your own, concentrating your own career. So that sort of rounded rugby approach does that help you now in this role, apart from just being a player? Uh, yeah, probably. I think so. Yeah, it's um, it's one thing I did really enjoy as well as the the coaching side of it. And you kind of probably see it as a as a probably different point of view. Um, probably appreciate more uh, what coaches do as well, and when they talk, make sure you listen a bit more than. And messing around, um, but yeah, it, I think it probably helps and understands uh, a bit more about the game. Dealing with referees, you have a slightly different approach to them, maybe. Um, yeah, just I don't know. Uh, every ref's different as well, so I think um, probably knowing what the ref's going to be like and uh, seeing what they've done in previous games, um, you probably a bit like what you do with opposition. Really, is it's going to be the same with refs? You know, if you talk too much to one, you could get him on the wrong side and if you talk too little then he may not you know get involved with you so it's understanding what the ref likes and m most importantly probably show him a bit of respect as well because it's, it's a tough job that they do and um, yeah I wouldn't like to be in the middle of having uh, 30 boys shouting now you are game. Did you have quite a lot on your plate coming back in after your lengthy injury and then of course the captaincy thrown in on top of that? Um, oh, I was lucky enough, obviously, to be back pre-season with the Ospreys, so um, I was up and running there 
uh, from the start with pre-season, managed to get a good bit of fitness under your belt and uh, feel a lot better. Um, <laughs> no, I haven't missed how tough they are. But no, and then obviously just picking up a, a bump after the first couple of games wasn't ideal because um, it would have been nice to have a good run of games. Um, but no, it's, like you said, it's, uh, it's a silly old game we play and it's not always perfect. Just so I know you're not one to look back, but how tough were those 12 games? Um, yeah, obviously, I'm not going to stay here and say it was easy or really hard because so many players have so many injuries in our game. It's, it's one of those things. Um, luckily enough, I've got a good family and friends around me. And yeah, it was one of them. And I always knew I wanted to, to kind of get back to on the field. And to be fair, the medical team and uh, the SNC that we have um, worked with the Ospreys were amazing. So. Any uh, low days you had, they, they would be there to pick you up. Or if there's any little niggles, they would be there to sort it out. So I um, kind of always had that um, aim to get back on the pitch. And even uh, you, you're not the youngest and a few people are questioning whether you're going to go, go carry on or not. Um, but it was always one of those things, um, like you say, you probably have a bit of time and you appreciate whether it's just one game you get back for or if it's a couple of years that you just make the most of, of what you've got, really. Were there many bumps in the road? Yeah, it was a couple. Yeah, it was. It was a couple. Um, but it's part of part of a rugby career, really. You have bumps in the road all the way through your career, so it's one of them where you probably have to toughen yourself up a bit. Just lastly, for me, I just wonder what you made of Tommy Rafael's moves. I mean, he had a brilliant series in South Africa. He's somebody who's really come through with taking his chances. Yeah, he's been brilliant. To be fair, no, someone obviously, obviously watching the games, he's excellent. Um, again, to know him the last couple of days, he, um, he seems like a really good guy as well. So, uh, you know, one of those that looking forward to working with um, around the environment. Um, and like I said, uh, there's a lot of back rowers here, so it's um, it's great to be able to work with them all, really. Just from a medical point of view, was there any, ever any doubt about the, the injury that you could come back from it? Um, <clears throat> not really. Uh, well, I say not really. It was one of them. Um, Probably it was a bit unknown, so um, there was no like theory or history of whether it could or couldn't come back. So um, it's one of them where, yeah, it probably was a bit of doubt uh, in a little bit, but nothing major. It was one of them that you knew the trust in the surgeon and uh, with your great SNC and conditioning team I had. And um, yeah, it was, it was one of them that hopefully could get over the line. Just on the captaincy, how did, uh, how did Wayne ask you to face to face on the phone? Um, yeah, he texted me first of all, um, and then I was a bit sketchy online. <laughs> I was like, oh, what have I done now? But then, uh, yeah, just spoke, and yeah, he was just brilliant, really. Uh, we spoke a few honest questions to each other, and it was great. Yeah, just the way he spoke about it was perfect, really. Was that before you came into camp? Or? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned in the video. I'm always shocked when you get called up for Wales, whether it's first to to last, really. You never take it for granted, no matter what. Um, I think you ever take it for, you know, you take your eye off the ball. Um, when you play in club rugby, then, yeah, you, you're just not going to do the right job. And what was your response to Wayne? Um, well, when he rang, or, yeah, it was obviously a great honour, and you, I didn't see it coming, to be fair. Um, just just because, uh, yeah, you don't, I guess, and then just had a bit of a chat, like a bit of a private conversation, really, and then um, I got just a few questions for him, and he had a few questions for me, and yeah, it was good. And then, obviously, you've captained Wales before. Um, what have you learned from those experiences that you can take into this um, I guess, obviously, with the players that we got on this squad, you, you don't hardly do anything as captain, to be fair. Um, the senior boys that we got in here, the experience that's around there, Literally, sometimes you don't even speak because they do so much speaking, they talk so much sense, and it is literally down to match day where, and half the time you talk to the playmakers anyway, what they want to do. Um, if anything, the only extra thing I have to do is probably come and speak to you guys, <laughs> um, which Verity and me have been fighting about already, but, uh, <laughs> but, but that's yeah. it really. And then just, last question just then? Last one, yeah. You mentioned the leadership group there, you look around the place, you know, Alan Wynn obviously cared. Yeah, it's massive, of course it is. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, it is. Um, like we said, we had a first like little meeting last night, and yeah, you look around, it's crazy the experience and just the knowledge just in the huddle uh, that we had. And um, yeah, it's one of them. Like I said earlier, really, you do hardly any speaking, and they're the ones there to help you all the time. To be fair, and they are brilliant at that. You know, Ken, everyone. To be fair to them. Okay. They thanks. couldn't have uh, given you a tougher game to start with, could they? 69 years since the last time we won, 32 successive defeats. What did you do about the All Blacks? Um, well, yeah, it's the, they are up there as the best in the world, aren't they? and um, there's obviously that bit of history with us and them. Um, and like you said, we, we always struggle our first game as well, which we know in the past in the autumn. So, um, yeah, not, not a bad way to start off, like you said, is it? So I soon, soon test it out. But uh, we, we, we're obviously looking at the bigger picture as well. Um, the World Cup coming ahead, and we're just looking to obviously build on the momentum now going into that, making sure we put performance in, getting the results, and and obviously we've got to do that looking at one game at a time with New Zealand first up. It's interesting when talking about the long term. This is the last one now, though, yeah. Cup, um, players look at, look at it in that way as well. Can I sorry, say again? So you, the players look in the same way as the coaches at the big picture, the World Cup coming up. and. This being a point. I, th I think, as a player point of view, you can't obviously take your eye off the first game, but you know for the squad um, that's going to go into the World Cup, if you think um, you build momentum, confidence builds in the team, you're only going to get better and better as you head into that World Cup. And if you go into the World Cup full of confidence, then anything can happen. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you.